If you yelled, that would make this quite an unbearable podcast. <laughs> so how you been? Good of you. Just been living, you know. It's another day in life. Are we? Hate. Are we actually in? We are. I was kind of hoping um, to like subtly slip it in, but it kind of just like came um, as it was. <laughs> sorry, guys. Can we get that out? <laughs> we can if we want to, but if we don't, then I'm just gonna leave it in. I think I think it's kind of nice, actually. The gremlin is not here with us. The gremlin? <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I actually have to bleep that out because he doesn't he doesn't want his name on the oh, on the YouTube channel sorry, at all. Man, so. man. Huh, that's Mr. Overload. <laughs> Get to the glucinator. Get to the glucinator. Um, mm, I'm just kidding. But this is my real voice. Um, yeah, sec- second time in, I think it was. Yeah. Mm. I was gonna say, it's been kind of like, um... Good bit. Yeah. It's been a while since we've done a podcast. It's like... All of our work schedules have made it kind of tough to actually get together and actually make a podcast. Like, me and Mark, we live together, but, like, for some reason, this is the first time we've actually had, like, the idea to to do, like, a one-on-one podcast, just me and him. And, I mean, this this YouTube channel is more than just, like, me Us. and him. Like, m- me, and, me and Overload, we actually kind of have, like, a a balance between the both of us. We, we want to do more like, like gaming videos and stuff. Me and Mark did the last one, but hopefully, hopefully scheduling and stuff allows us to do more of like the gaming with, with overload. I, I want to include everybody. It's just, it just gets kind of tough sometimes. I don't ever want to do YouTube for like a money standpoint. Remember what I said that it's all about if we get that many views, I would just love to see a lot of people just come in as a like community kind of, kind of like other YouTube channels and just have fun. Oh, um, yeah. some accidentally dropping in the background. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm a sponsor. I think from, I mean, me and you both work like, I, I would say blue collar jobs. You work more than me and get up earlier than me, that's for sure. Half an hour earlier, but I wouldn't say it's, like, it's not a world-changing difference. What do you do for work? Yeah, I build small parts. It's a company. It's called... They pay me... Start off... I, uh, I wouldn't... I wouldn't... I wouldn't go that far. I no. wouldn't say... I wouldn't say your wage on, like... I just want to make sure this doesn't, uh, this doesn't fall off. I, I wouldn't state your wages and stuff. That's a bit personal. I mean, like, it's it ge- teaches me new skills, and all I can describe it is is like there's just different kind of categories in that position for manufacturing. That's all I can say. What do you do? I do. I actually. I quit my job as a calibration technician and I moved on to working back in the machine shop as a manual slash CNC machinist where I, um, one hand, I run a lathe. If any of you have ever seen a lathe, a manual lathe, um, it's just straight up manual labor. I love it. That's, that's what I live for is working with my hands and get my hands dirty and actually like, like putting in the work and CNC lathe is a little bit more like not hands-on where you, where you program the machine and you kind of let the machine do its thing. You have to switch the tools out and stuff because there are certain tools that cut certain things and it, it's no matter what it's you have to pay attention to the machine and like still do your part in the job, but it's still a job nonetheless. And I switched back and forth between the two and and it's, it's something that I love, you know, it's something that I, I, I get up at 4am every morning to do 
helps me keep like doing what I do. That that's my main source of income and living. And same for you. The job that you have, that's your that's what keeps you afloat. Yeah. And just like mm. the job I could describe it as it's not bad. But it's not like my most favorite or I don't hate it or anything or dislike it. It's just in the medium for me. Yeah. I don't think jobs are necessarily supposed to be something that you like. To me, a job isn't something that you love or hate. It's kind of like to be happy with what you do. It has to be like the perfect amount of in between, you know, for your like forever job. I think that's where it has to end up is the perfect amount of, you know, like, I, I, I guess it's just like in between being happy and finding out what makes the family work. I don't have a family yet. Like, well, I mean, I have a mother and a father and a brother. The brother's the podcast with us. But like so, eventually someday down the road, I want to have children. I want to have a wife. I want to have a house and a stable income and like the standard American dream, I guess, kind of ideals, you know? Yeah. I'm speaking of having a girlfriend. I do have one. I won't say her name, but I'll give anyone advice. Um, For people don't, that don't have one. I'm sorry to hear that, but just keep on keeping on. It's from a song. But the most important thing is, uh, I won't go into my life of <laughs> that, but we're almost together for two years, and I just, I never knew a lot about love in the first place. I always got rejected, which sucked, but for anybody, if you feel like you're going to give up, which is, is what happened, she just came to me, and my advice is just, no matter how hard it gets, just find the right person, and tell them how you see the qualities that most people don't have these days, that I do. Yeah. I think speaking one-on-one is definitely a very personal experience. That's one that kind of needs to be learned. I know I, I, I learned it in a very specific kind of way. Um, Tell them uh, what, qual- what qualities you see in me whenever you see us hanging out. That's different. You know, there's kind of been like a... Like, from the school that I grew up in, there's kind of been like a, like a, growing up and in school and stuff, there's been like, it's been kind of that difficulty of making friends and stuff and just kind of fitting in. It's never been necessarily easily or easy, but like, I don't know. I think I kind of found my, my little niche just to make it, you know, like to be, to be me. It's, it, it's never easy. And like me and overload, which you guys don't know his real name, but me and him have been friends since the eighth grade. <laughs> it's actually kind of a funny story. So I, I don't, I actually don't think I've ever mentioned it at any point throughout our YouTube channel history. I know it hasn't been this long, or that long, but I'll give you kind of a little bit of like insight on it. So me and Overload have been friends since I think it's been the eighth or ninth grade. And he had moved here from like about, we live in Pittsburgh. So it's about two and a half hours away from where we are. So I remember walking through, the halls and our school is kind of specific like 
there's there's no middle school there's you have like elementary school and high school and there's no in between like like you go in elementary school it's kindergarten through sixth grade and then from for high school it's seventh through twelfth so i know i'm pretty sure a lot of schools are like they have a middle school in between that you actually go to in between elementary and high school so we went to just elementary and high school that was pretty much it that's the way it was described whenever we were in school and we like would you say that's the same i would we since we are brothers since we don't have to hide our identities anymore we did go to the same school we're three years apart <laughs> you giving the whole backstory <laughs> now this is what i gotta say about school I I got lucky with the last cursive, but and I didn't learn home ec, but I wish I didn't get rid of it. No specific target, but go ahead. No, um, like oh, I remember where I was gonna lift off or where I left off. Sorry, I'm a little. I've had a few drinks tonight, so um, eighth grade. I would still say is like, like. So high school kind of starts off like seventh grade. You're really like thrown right into it. Like being the big kid on top in elementary school is being a sixth grader. Whenever you get, whenever you get like thrown into seventh grade and you're immediately into like high school, you're at the very bottom of the totem pole. And like, Whenever you're at the very bottom, you kind of have nobody except who you're throwing in there with. And if you don't have a small friend group like I had, and I'm pretty sure like you have had, Mark. Mm. I really didn't have many grades or <laughs> many friends <laughs> until sixth grade. <clears throat> I mean, my friend doesn't matter if I say his name or not. I'm going to say, if it's super important, we can just edit it out. It don't matter. Um, he is... I was friends with, I'd say, like, the... I don't want to be rude, but people are, that are good at computers and stuff, if you know what I mean. Like, I feel like nerds is a little bit too much. Nah, it doesn't matter. But, uh, whenever I was in seventh, I got... <laughs> lost. I was so confused. It was like a maze. And then a couple of grades later, I got to, I got to do helping hands. And then that's whenever I went to Austin's lunch group. If you remember that. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say lunch is where I really kind of found myself. Like, and, and being with, being with you was definitely a big old help. Like, so overload, he he came to our school, I think, whenever he was in the eighth grade. And I was in the seventh grade. Mark, you were you were still not in elementary school before he even came. I think you came to you came to the high school whenever I was in like I think it was in ninth grade. I think that's whenever you came. You were well, we're we're three years apart. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to do the math. I'm not good with mental math, but so Mark was in, let's say seventh grade. I was in like ninth or 10th grade at the time. I I, want to say I was in ninth. Mark came around and there was really not that many people that I think like I fit in with their, with their friend group. And Mark's, Mark's known me since I was, well, well shit we've known each other our whole lives <laughs> like yeah. it's been kind of it's been kind of me and you throughout our entire growing up and overload has been the guy since like we had this thing at our school it was called cherry blossom festival and i remember i remember the year 
I remember the, actually the first day that Overload showed up. And I was walking through the hallways. I didn't know anybody. I didn't have a girlfriend. I had no friend group. And I was just for for kind of a singled out, like kind of metal head eighth grader who was just trying to find his way through school. I I didn't have anybody. And there just happened to be a new kid that walked the hallway. That's kind of how it's kind of sad how I describe it. But like, like you find the new kids that are insecure and just trying to find their, find their way into like a new world for them. Like that's how I fit in is trying to fit in with the new kids and being myself and trying to find my, my own new self in a way and and from from that point on as far as eighth grade goes we didn't talk to each other that much it wasn't until the ninth grade that i sat behind him in geometry class and i would sit there and i would struggle with my work and i would turn around and there was this kid with long hair and and like i would just say to him like hey i don't really know the answer to this question do you know (laughs) you know like that was just it. That, that was the way it worked. That was our dynamic as far as like us kind of finding each other. And it worked. It really worked to this day. We are still friends. And to this day, we still talk and we share personal moments. And whenever we struggle with stuff, that's that's who we talk to. Um. Mark- do we have anything else we would like to talk about? Tell um, you right now. <laughs> so since we don't have anything else, I think in maybe nice introduction of ourselves because they know a little bit. They don't really know much about us. That's a really good talking point, actually. I guess I guess people should, people should kind of get to know the true Mark before they see his face. Are you gonna reveal your face at some point? Yes, it will be, I will bring some props, so I'll, I'll do it slowly, but at the end, you will see who I truly am. Yeah. Hmm. I guess I can go first. My, how, how many introductions should we go into? As many as you want. Talk. So, uh, I might not look like it, but or I am the tallest one for I don't know how, but I look like I'm the oldest. <laughs> It'll be crazy once they see who we <laughs> they won't think that we're brothers. But yeah, I was the one who was since we talked about school I, I try my hardest. If I had to cheat to get through, it didn't matter. I finally worked up my ways through straight A's in 12th grade, finally. Became a uh, prom king and all that. Got the best answer. It was great. But I'm not trying to be the most perfect guy. I'm a little bit of voice of reason. I'm always there. I got his back. Yeah. Um, my favorite subject was really math, gym, and lunch, to be honest. And I had two part-time jobs, and this is my first full-time. Which, at first, I, I was, wanted to... <laughs> I don't want to say anything, but I got so mad. I guess one a lot, but then I realized as the months gone by, it got easier. I just kept doing on, and I have something that the doctors have to check always, you know, and talk about and stuff like that, which I'm limited to protein, which sucks. <clears throat> 
yeah. things to take a lot of mess. And to be honest, I'm trying to lose weight, but it's like, it's hard whenever you're, you can't have much protein and you don't get full. And I was, a, I lifted a lot just because I was motivated back then. I almost made it to thousand pounds and uh, so you almost made it to like the thousand pound club, right? I was a hundred and ten pounds off, I was eight hundred and ninety pounds in. Yeah. But uh there I didn't have many friends, like I said. Hmm. Reading I don't mind it, it's just my mind's in work mode a lot. And yeah. <laughs> I look like my dad more of <laughs> uh, I would say that those of you guys who have been listening to the podcast you'll never see our dad or our mom or anything but like I think once you guys see Mark's face reveal you'll see the drastic difference between us two and like I I'm, I was never in weight club like like Mark was but no, Mark's definitely put in the effort and the drive that it takes to be like a dedicated weightlifter and to to make himself like get physically into shape. Mark Mark's got very <laughs> he's showing he's showing them to me right now. His his calves are very, very, very defined. I don't know why. <laughs> it just happened. It just it it just kinda is what it is. <laughs> and, um, like, tell them about the how much I did really support you. You did, you you really did. Like throughout, and like, it's not. I just want to have a podcast where people listen. Like monetization is not an issue. I work a full time job. Mark works a full time job. Overload works a full time job. We all work our asses off and that's just to get us by like this is something that we we have and we hope people listen just to listen that's all we want like there is no there's no monetary value in the channel that we have we like we're just a group of outcasts i would say that for all of us and not in an offensive way like i've been an outcast mark i Guarantee that you have felt the same way that I do. What do you mean by that? I I had to relate and in my head I'm a little bit slow. Sorry. The feeling of not fitting in. Mm. School is one of them. And yeah. Work. But uh sorry for interrupting for a second. You're okay. But, you're not interrupting. I don't like how YouTube demonetizes because at work it's even worse. Way worse. It definitely gets, it definitely gets to be a bit much. I'm sorry, I'm grabbing my hoodie. Don't I'm worry. But um Like I helped you in situations where you've been emotional drunk. I've been th there for a long time. We used to have fun when we were skate park and stuff. That was fun. That would actually be a good point to talk about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thinking about it. Any skateboarders? <laughs> Skateboarding and like emotional support and help and stuff. I can't. <laughs> well, well, little story hour. I came home. I came home from the bar one night. And all the bars in our small little town are, keep in mind, there's only two, there's only two little bars that are in our town. There used to be three, but one shut down. And I came home from the one and I was a literal fucking mess. <laughs> I was a mess. I was drinking 100 proof liquor that... Just happened to be on sale that night. And I was having just me trouble. And when I say me trouble, I don't mean to sound like a drama queen little, little bitch. But 
<laughs> you're la- you're laughing. I'm a, I'm a cry baby. That's a, <laughs> we have fun going. These are the things that I love. These are the things I love that we can sit here and laugh and joke about <laughs> and just have a good time. But like, I, I I came home from the bar and I was in my feels the one night. And there was nobody that I had to turn to. And just, like, there was no, there was no, like, there was no outside friend that I could talk to. And I was just really, really feeling myself and just, like, such a piece of shit. Because I drank too much and I walked home. And I, it was, it was the middle of winter. So there was snow on the ground. I was just feeling really, really bad about myself. And I came home and Mark was Mark was here. He talked me through all of it and helped me out whenever I think that I needed it the most. There's nobody that I've ever had. Well, I can't say that. So Overload has been there for me through a lot of the hard shit. A lot of, like, there was one thing that was really bad that... I don't know if I'll be able to, I don't know if I'll be able to stomach it for this podcast, but it was, it was very bad. And he, he talked me through like how to be just, you know, be a person and be supportive and stuff and help me through, through that. That was, that was a very hard time. That was a couple of years ago now, but. Um, yeah, that, that, that'll be an upset for another day. That's, that's definitely something that was very, very life changing. Uh, for me, my memory isn't the best, nor does my brain work the most, uh, more differently than people, not in a bad way. But uh, I have some called seizures, which you probably heard of, which it's very sad for me, but I really don't remember a lot of them. But one at the Cherry Blossom Festival, uh, it was a scary experience because can I describe it, how it felt? If anybody doesn't know about one. For me, I remember it felt like my neck literally felt like it stopped working and it was crazy. And Austin was there and you could say the rest if you want. That was definitely kind of the, that was the scariest day of my life. I I was just going about my Cherry Blossom Festival and kind of like just floating about, drifting about. They let everybody out who's in who's who is in a class during that period. They let out to go and enjoy the Cherry Blossom Festival and kind of just like hang around and you know enjoy enjoy the festivities of the school, but. I was getting ready for baseball practice because I played baseball at the time. And I think earlier in the day, I heard somebody, not, not earlier in the day. It was like, like 10 minutes earlier. They said, Hey, somebody's having a seizure outside. And that like, for me, I I don't know why that wasn't like, to me, that wasn't much. Like, I didn't really think about it. But I think at the same time, I still wasn't used to, like, knowing that that could be my, you know, my brother. And, like, somebody, somebody come up to me literally as I was, like, getting ready to walk out the door, still walk down to the baseball field. And somebody had come up to me and they said, hey, you Austin? And I said, yeah. And they said, I think your brother's outside having a seizure. And, like... I've never had my blood run cold so fast. Uh, Like, 
as much as I did in that moment. <laughs> like I, I stopped everything that I was doing. I threw my bat down. I threw my bag down, my glove, my helmet, everything, everything that I had to play baseball. I threw, I threw down on the ground and I said like in my head, like it was such a moment of fight or flight. There was nothing that I could do to be helpful other than to be there. And like, that person who had told me that, hey, somebody's having a seizure, they said, they like, they briefly glossed over, they may have fell down some steps. And that to me, that to me was what I think got me the most was, oh my God, like, I think my brother just had a, had a seizure and fell down the, the concrete stairs outside of the gymnasium. And I busted out through the doors. And there was a crowd gathered gathered around. And I walked on the stairs. And at the at the bottom was you. Yeah. That was that was kind of a life changing moment for Wasn't I passed out a little bit though? Yeah. I think I just woken up. It was groggy. Yeah, it was it was before you'd even woken up. Cool. There was a lot to it. Yeah. <laughs> Tell them about the one time with the <laughs> bow's death by accident. <laughs> that was a there crazy was, moment. There was, so I've been in the woodworking ever since I was a like kind of a young kid, I guess. And I <laughs> had... Watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as a kid, there was <laughs> there was a fa- there was a Donatello phase that I had where I really liked like bow staffs, and I was also into wood wor- woodworking as a kid. And I saw some guy make a bow staff on YouTube, and I was like, "Oh shit, there's my end! I'm gonna be one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles." <laughs> and so I had. I had all the hand tools and everything to make this bow staff and everything to stain it exactly the way I wanted it to and clear coat it and make it look fucking perfect. And I went through everything and I brought it home and I let it dry because my impatient ass, as soon as it like started to get tacky with the clear coat and shit, I was like, I'm taking this home. So I took it home, and as soon as I took it home, I forgot about it and let it sit there for a couple days. But anyway, the next time I remember to pick up this bow ta- bow staff and be like, "Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles," was I picked it up and I was like, "Mark, check this shit out. I'm gonna take this bow staff and pretend like I'm gonna hit you with it." And I did. I did hit him with it. One hundred percent on accident. Right in between the eyebrows. And I heard I heard the most terrifying sound that I think you, you can hear as a young kid. And all I heard was as soon as I went boom with the bow staff, I, like I hit him with the butt end of it. And it was the scariest part of it. And I felt really I felt so bad about it because I heard the crunch sound. And like uh, Step Brothers. It sounds like Step Brothers. It sounds like something at the Step Brothers. It sounds like a bit where you're like, <laughs> hey, I'm gonna make this test let me test this out on you. And I'm yeah. like and I was like, ah <laughs> But luckily to this day, I th- I think you're still fine. <laughs> I mean How do I not pass out from that? That was made of pure wood. It sounded like a knockout hit and I feel like Mark never lost consciousness. Mark never, like, fell to the ground or, like, had a... Well, I mean, there's a little bit of, like, a, a stumbling moment where, or like, literally right after I hit you with it. And I felt so bad about it. I felt so... I still feel bad about it to this day. It's okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it was just a... It, I misjudged how far I was going to swing this bow staff at it. <laughs> It just sounds terrible. It sounds really, really awful. I have another thing we could talk about. 
talk about it. Some sort of, I was thinking hockey. Because okay. I don't think we ever went. Well, I will go first on this. Um, I didn't really watch hockey whenever I was little until later, 2016. But, uh, yeah, whenever I heard about Lemieux and all of them, the great penguins, you know, and all that now. Yeah. Um, I started to play hockey, if you remember. Yeah, yeah. For six years. I got, you saw, like, the final season, how many goals I ever got. I got two hat tricks. Yeah. I was, I got literally, they, I remember it. Whenever I was going to shoot, the imagine this, anybody who's listening, the referee threw it, and I literally slapped it in as it was thrown in the air. Like a puck drop. No, like it was before I hit the ground. I think I just like slap shot it right in. Yeah. guess I could be like that, uh, the hockey magician, I guess. The hockey Houdini. But I looked it up. In a single game, that's more than Gretzky and Lemieux. I did. That's actually really cool. Wow. Oh, he got. Let's see. I think it was like eight two. Yeah. Eight to four, and I was like <laughs> six out of the eight goals. I was like, yeah, I got my goal, and uh, it was fun. I did the more ice skating of us, but uh, I was called the Big Z. The Big Zamboni. For the reason. Austin did rollerblading more of. He knew more moves. As I say, I never really did like the ice hockey. He did more of like the, the inline, like pickup game hockey. But I got a funny story. He was going down Grandma Alvin's driveway. I mean, <laughs> boom. Uh, this is a nasty story. Oh, yeah. You don't have to tell it. Hopefully no one's grossed out. Sorry. No, I can tell it if you want to, but... It doesn't matter. I just hopefully... Give your perspective. I want to hear your perspective on it, except I don't think I've ever heard it before. For what? For me going on the driveway. Oh, you want me to give you my feedback on it? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, tell me what you saw. Because it had to have been nasty. You, you remember, don't you? Coming I, down really fast. I remember it 100%. It looked like um, someone skydived and really just mislanded. Or like, <laughs> you know how cars, like the car drifts. Yeah. That's what it looks like. <laughs> I was just on the side of our grandma's house. <laughs> just say her driveway kind of wraps around her house. So <laughs> we had a long, like, narrow kind of runway strip of... Of, of asphalt or like blacktop or something so and it was really smooth especially so do you, do you want me to go into my part or do you want to tell you the rest of your part if you have anything else left to tell um i will try to think of something but hmm i don't remember too much of that day but that's really all i remember i don't remember what it's for <laughs> go ahead <laughs> All right, so, so my grandparents' driveway goes from the very front of their house, and they have a they have like an old like coal miner kind of like cookie cutter style house. Like houses in Pennsylvania, you'll go along strips of road where you'll see like cookie cutter houses. One of the characteristics of a coal miner house, I think, is that it was long. Like, it's a long kind of house. It's very, like, narrow, so you don't have that wide of rooms. It could be a two-story house, but every room in the house would be kind of narrow. And it would it would make up for the narrowness and length of the house. So, like, this house probably had, like, like 40, 45 feet of, of driveway, and... It was a smooth asphalt driveway. So I started at the very front of the house and it was kind of like a, 
kind of uh, it, it was definitely a downhill slant for the driveway. And I started from the top. And I was going, I was going, I was feeling real confident. And I made it down to where it kind of made the horseshoe kind of loop at the very end. And I wiped out on my inline hockey skates. And I wasn't wearing a shirt that day. Pennsylvania summers get pretty hot. So I did not feel like wearing a shirt that day. And we were, we were pretty young. So we were still in school at the time. It was summer break. My mother and my father were at work. Yours too. <laughs> I was going to say, we both have the same biological Ours. parents. I was going to say, our parents were both at work, so we were, going to our, at our, to, we were going to our grandparents' house to stay. So that's the whole reason why we were there. And I went down the driveway on mainline skates, and I was going fast. I was going really, really fast. We were, my, you and my cousin were playing inline, you and our cousin were playing inline hockey. And you guys had a goalie net down at the bottom. And you, yeah, I can just imagine it from your perspective. You see me flying down the driveway. go, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I, my skates went out from underneath me towards the very end. And I slid on this hot summer's day asphalt. Like, my, I was not wearing a shirt. And once I hit the ground, there was no stopping me. I kept going. And my rib cage on the side of my body, my rib cage slid across this hot, like, part of my language. There's no way, to, there's no other way to describe it, but it's hot fucking asphalt for probably like five or six feet. <laughs> and speaking of painful, I'm known for falling down the stairs for crying out loud. <laughs> That's a good story to tell. Uh, That's a pretty good one, actually. I, I will tell that. If you could see it, I will show it on the podcast if they don't mind. But I still have the scar from the surgery. Yeah. Where all, all my whole growth plate was broken. Remember, although all my bones were pushed out of place, you see my thumb go like, Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was the another, nastiest thing. That's a night to never forget. I'm going yeah. to pause this real quick. Time to take a break never hurts. You yeah. know? It's the worst thing to stay on your phone too long. Yeah. Do, I'm guilty, but that makes me fall asleep sometimes. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've, like, sitting there and just, or laying in bed, I think is the proper setting, where I just, like, lay in bed and look at my phone until I fall asleep. It just makes me feel really, like... Just terrible the next morning. Yeah. What else do you want to talk about? I was going to say, for anybody that's actually watching this, like, I guess you kind of already understand it was such a video. We, we decided to put the camera up and actually take a video of us. For at least for this episode. Just, uh, it's kind of last minute. I understand. Spice it up. Yeah, yeah, we decided to uh, spice it up last minute just to, just to kind of give you guys something to look at. If you have <laughs> no, a lot playing. of, sorry, go ahead. If you have a lot of free time like me, I have spent so much time on YouTube that I know a lot of the ways that they do it. Do you know? YouTube kind of like YouTube has hit a certain point. Yep, mm -hmm. like. Whenever I get home from work, after after working in a machine shop ten and a half hours each day, and I get home, and all I want to do is sit there and just watch videos and like dull my mind out even more. And it, it, it doesn't matter what it is; it doesn't matter what I come home to find on YouTube. Like I, I can come home and just sit there and just literally like just watch anything, anything to take my mind off of the day. That's that's when everything gets bad. Like, sit there, and I just waste my mind away watching 10-second little videos on YouTube. Yep. I don't know how many hours I do actually spend, but I record watching a lot of movies to try to get off of YouTube more. Like, uh, Western. If you like classic, if you haven't seen any, which... Some are from 1930s, which are 
<sighs> That's a big age difference for me. <laughs> oh, uh, go ahead. I like I, I'm gonna say the first like the first 1930s movie that I think I've ever seen. I watched with you today, and it was definitely and there was definitely a big difference between the movies that are out nowadays. Definitely big production difference. Oh, um, Jesse James. That was a good movie. Jesse James. If you can find it, go check it out. But I just randomly found it on the channel, Western channel. I can't remember what number it was. But it's, it's just, they're like, they're nice and shorter than other movies. And they're like, not too much edited or anything. They're just classic. But so, uh, what? It's definitely a different type, diff- different style of movie compared to what's out nowadays. Uh, back then, the big the differences I seen was on a poster. It says if you caught this bandit or whatever. In Western times, you got like twenty five thousand, but it's no big deal these days. That's what I see. In my friends say twenty five thousand dollars would be different compared to. Compared to back then, I think $25,000 nowadays is a chump change compared to like back in the old Western 1800s days. It's for that's what the rich people would say. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyone can say that they can eat and make, make easily over that much, anyways. Don't really understand what just happened. It was kind of weird. Yeah. What did happen? I don't know. I don't know. We don't we don't get too many power outages here. I wonder if there was like a snowstorm or something that was supposed to come in the middle of the night that Nah, it's probably the cold. It probably is. Oh man. Where'd you go? What the heck? No wait. What the hell? What happened to you? Uh, I guess I'm a magician. <laughs> You're too dang magic. I'm a Houdini, but you know, I I did it. I said I won in the last episode of the podcast, and I actually did it. And say so you said you're never gonna refill your face, right? For a while, but I didn't expect it to take this long for a video. So I was like, <laughs> I, no, no shame to anybody, really. I just. I just thought, do now. Uh, it'll be fun. Yeah. I liked my face review. Just in the middle of just a podcast. <laughs> and, and now you get to do yours too. Yeah. Uh, probably not the most kempt for for a podcast, but... Uh, this is it. This is, this is us in the most raw form. Our height, we're a little different. Go ahead and say your height, because I want to say mine. What is mine? I can't remember for some reason. You 5'10? Probably 5'10, f- 5'8. No. No? More? 5'11? That's 5'10. You Five see ten. how tall I was compared yeah. to him. Yeah, I would say, Dad, maybe 5'10. You're what? 5'11? You're taller than Dad. Yeah. <laughs> um, Gunsayers. I am not ashamed. Five foot seven. Should we do like a big blow? Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, that what works. Let's just say bring the mic with us. <laughs> bring the mic with us. Bring the mics with us. All right. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it sounds like I'm an. It's probably game. very loud. I'm an Antarctic. Okay, sorry. So anyone, if you're guessing. I'm a short king. <laughs> I'm five foot seven. Mark here. Five foot ten or five foot eleven. So if any of you want to put that in perspective, <laughs> to say I'm not that tall. Never been that tall. And you know what? I'm not ashamed to admit it. I'm like two feet off of uh, six foot basically. Pretty much, yeah. 
Let's just say over, sorry, guys. Over overload is what six foot one. So you're just really? a, you're just a hair shorter than I. So that puts me unsurprisingly as the shortest. <laughs> I thought I'm almost. I thought she was. Yeah, she's definitely shorter than me. So she's what, like five foot three or five foot four or something. But that's not a shame. But having tall problems, speaking of her cousin, he's <laughs> five six. He's he, we seen him walk in the doors through Christmas parties and stuff, or family Christmas <laughs> holidays. <laughs> and you see him like, I thought he was gonna hit his head off the door. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, our our first Scared. cousin. He's he's like six foot three or six foot four or something. He's he's up there. He does not look like any of our family members that you think. You know what? Our our family has like the tall gene, you know? Yeah. I say you definitely got that. I don't have that, so <laughs> I've seen you uh Compared to me, no shame, but... No, <laughs> Put me on blast. Put me on blast. I want to hear it. Roast me. I'm not going <laughs> to roast you, but I knew him as a skinny boy, and there's a reason why. I am skinny. It was crazy because I can't remember how long you've held that form for. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's had to have been since, like, 7th, 8th grade. Uh, compared to me, um, I wouldn't say, like, I'm really a big difference. Like, we're just a hundred pounds apart. <laughs> Not a big difference, but just a hundred pounds apart. That's, that's it. That's it. That's, you, that's all. Let me tell them about <laughs> a fact I looked up. This is true. But I don't know how they found this out. Apparently, adult humans uh, weigh uh, how much water they have in their stomach is about a hundred pounds. Really? Yes. I'm not joking. Look it up later. I will look that up later. I did not know that. Do you want me to look it up now? If you want to, I mean, I'm safe. How how much do you weigh? You're mostly muscle. Like, so no shame in saying it. Like, you see me uh, tell them about how big my salads get. You're, so... So Mark, Mark has a deficiency where he can eat, like, pretty much not that much protein and only salads. Like, they're, like, so whatever you have to cut out in protein, you can take in and, like, pretty much everything else that like a normal healthy human diet can intake. So Mark eats a lot of salads and Mark's salads are like bigger than my head. They're, they're pretty big. So like Mark's Mark has done everything that he can to keep his diet on the regular. And like Mark's not really eaten much that can, like make him fat. What does it say? Look at how much water is in the human body. Fifty to fifty-nine percent. Okay. So we're in in completion. We're really not that heavy as we think we are. I think down to skin, bone, and muscle, we would not be as heavy as I, like we think that we weigh as with as much water as in our body. Like I think that would make a huge difference. You know what I'm curious about? Why do they tell us to drink eight cups if we... I wish we could just get it from our body. Yeah. But isn't that weird? You're, drink, you're putting more water in your body. Well, water goes to so many different places in the body as soon as you put it in. Like, as soon as it hits the mouth and travels, like, it goes to so many different... Water, like, plays so many different, like, vital functions in the human body at one time. So I think the weight... I think that weight is probably calculated into, you know, like, what the human body's supposed to do and stuff. I'll do my leg muscle reveal on day two. <laughs> because 
Once you see how big my leg is for no reason, I don't know why. Like, I think I was just big like that in the legs. We should do a, a, a weightlifting reveal one day to reveal how much we can lift for, like, deadlift, bench press, leg, leg, leg squats. Can I tell my? What? Uh, it was tough. I think I lost focus in the little weightlifting thing to 1,000 pounds. Which, 1,000 pound club? Yes. And I, I was probably, if I would have gone through with it, I would have done 400 pound deadlifts myself. I had a belt, which it was tough. I, I could barely do it. My weakest was bench pressed. I thought I said press, <laughs> bench mm-hmm. press, and then squats, mm, 315, 300 or something, so, yeah. Oh, say so you got me beat. Oh, yeah, and the leg press this is amazing, 610 pounds. I, this is actually something really worth talking about. I would get concerned with how much you would would leg press at the gym just because of how many weights I would see stacked on each side. Like it freaked me out because of how much. And you would sit there and you would get in the leg press machine and you go and just like push it back up. Like it was nothing like that would blow my mind with how much you could leg press. And like, I give you so much credit cause I could never do the same. And even with like, even with deadlifts, you deadlifted so much and you squatted so much and I pulled my hamstring trying to to squat how much you've squatted before. <laughs> like Um There's a huge difference. I'll give you my perspective. That was the hardest workout I have ever done. It and like actual say if you did like squats, that would probably like bend the bar itself. I've seen the videos of people bending the bar with like the weights on the sides as far as like deadlifts or squats go and stuff. And you, even deadlifts. Have you ever seen the videos of the people that do the deadlifts where they lift up their knees mm-hmm. or to their knees, up to the waist, up to the chest, and then they go all the way up to like above their heads. I've never been able to do that ever. Neither. But at the same time, I think the gym that we have access to doesn't necessarily allow that. We, we, we work, we work out at a very small, like very small town gym. I gotta give credit to the gym a little bit though. Yeah, they had a decent amount of lifting. In yeah. My opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they had the balance of everything. In my opinion. Yeah. Worth going down there for weightlifting. I think my deadlift max, which I've never, I'm ashamed to say that I've never really tried to beat it, was the the deadlift. Uh, m- or my my deadlift maximum was 250 pounds. There's a video of it. I still have it actually. Like my little my little I, s- I set my phone up on a different piece of weightlifting equipment and I took a video of me deadlifting 205 210 pounds. Mm-hmm. Like that was that was my deadlift max. But I never really tried to push myself harder. I think I could eventually work my way up to it. It's just yeah. I'm a I'm a kind of a frail, lean body. Cardio has always been my thing. You know what sucks about the gym? I give credit to them. They have good treadmills for upstairs. They have a fantastic cardio setup. But the um thing that I, I wish I could do with the with the deadlifting bars, they don't really have much room you could do or put it on. Yeah, they're they're. The gym that we would go to, well, I, I still go to it currently. Mark Mark doesn't go there anymore, but I, I, I'm i sure it's a matter of time before he starts going back down. But um, there's the way it's set up is kind of weird because they have like um, they have two floors. The upstairs is all 100% cardio for the top level and then downstairs 
They have all the weightlifting equipment that you can imagine packed into one, like, kind of relatively tiny room. For being a gym, it's a very tiny room. And, like, anything you ever really try to do, like, as far as weightlifting goes, like, deadlifts or bench press or free, even free weights, like, without the barbell, it, it, you're kind of cramped no matter where you go in there. But I, I still love the gym. I really do, especially that one because of like it's 24 hours and whenever I go there, I don't feel like really, I guess, like, I don't know. It's It's got that small town kind of feel to it. Hmm. Um, it's just hmm. for me to go to the gym. I have to be really moving, and and since I don't have a coach to really push me up, it doesn't really affect me that much anymore, but mm, we used to do five miles, which I thought was awesome. Five miles running or five miles walking? Eh, Whatever we did in the summer. You weren't way ahead, but it was fun. Yeah. Um, Say my current running goal right now is 3.11 miles. I try to do a 5K every time I go to the gym and do cardio and stuff. I need to get back into lifting. That's where I think that I can find my strong point and stuff. I'm a lean I'm a lean guy as far as my physique is and my build. I think that I could be better in like actually packing on pounds like muscle-wise and stuff. I need to change my diet. My diet is terrible. Like between the carbohydrates and the sugars and everything that I take in, like during my shift at work, like the temptation just gets too strong to just sit there and like walk all the way over to the vending machine and pick out like two bags of Doritos or like candy or something. They never put healthy snacks in the freaking vending machine. So it gets kind of tempting. Although I could pre plan ahead and stuff. And maybe, maybe that's what I'll start doing is actually like, finding healthy alternatives to to take in for breakfast in the morning at 5.30. (laughs) Can I give people advice? Go ahead. Um, What I do is I don't really get a snack at work. I wait until I get home. But in the morning, I... uh, Oops, sorry if that was loud. Any to anybody. But... I take two cereal bars and two fruits. It makes it, like, good. So then, sure, and then I work. I have to sit there for an hour and a half with it, which is painful. But um, I do get hungry, and then my work actually takes my mind off of food so much. And then I take, like, a leftover, which doesn't really fill me up. Fill me up, amen. But it gets the job done. Yeah. Like, say, for instance, I took chili mac into work, if you know what that is. Yeah, it, buddy. <laughs> it, had, it had, like, protein in it. It was good. Yeah. Filling. I can tell you that. That's what I took for my lunch the other day. Ooh. Now, I will say that, like, waking up before the sun comes up and going to work and being at work before the sun comes up definitely takes a toll. It definitely takes a toll on your on your regular eating habit schedule, and I've tried to find ways to to kind of counterbalance that, like find something to take in. Because I I wake up at four, I end up at work by like on a normal day. I wake up at four, get ready by four thirty, leave by four thirty, end up at work at five, and being at work at five a.m. like Once you get there, you kind of have to find something to do real quick for for breakfast because as soon as you get there, your shift starts. And, like, something quick, nutritious. I'm starting to kind of think that oatmeal may be the way to go. Kind of pre-plan. Make some oatmeal or, like, like an egg sandwich, something like eggs on a bagel. I think that would be actually pretty good for never get into work and stuff well i know i know for you the protein may be a little bit harder because like the eggs and stuff but the oatmeal you like oatmeal right i do but 
I like to prepack. So, or my dad's or our dad is very restful. So he you now he is. And I do wake up with him and I get up. So whenever I take my lunch and everything or pack it the night before, it's already there and I just grab it and I don't have enough time to drink my coffee or, and, uh, I didn't, I don't get a single cup for eight hours. Yeah. Imagine how I feel. I don't, I get up that early. No yeah. coffee. Do they not have coffee makers at work? Uh, no, wait, you guys don't have like coffee makers. Huh? No, we don't. Oh, I see. That's... Wait, we do, but I can't remember. They're upstairs. <laughs> I don't remember where. I was going to say, our coffee maker is like right in the shop. And I'm in charge of making the coffee in the morning. I don't know how much coffee to make for everybody, but usually. I have, uh, I'll, I'll go about 15, 20 cups. <laughs> it's usually enough for everybody. In a shop of like eight to nine guys, I feel like that's, that's the appropriate amount. Cause I, I know I personally can drink more than one. That's just me. That That's how I get my morning started as well. I was like trying to find a breakfast, trying to scound up a breakfast. Hmm. Um, let's see. I like to take an agar. That's pretty good. I know you can't have like milk or anything. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, he, he, he can't have milk, really. It's, yeah, that, that stupid goddamn allergy. It's, I don't have allergies, but I'm kind of in the same boat. I guess I've never really addressed that on this podcast. Or, you know, like, I, I've, I've been allergic to cow's milk ever since the day I was born. And the only way that I found out is after my mom got done with bottle feeding me. I tried cow's milk for the first time. And in my crib, like my mom just happened to walk in at the perfect time to see me as an infant broken out in hives. And they took me to the doctors and stuff. And that's when they very first found out that I was allergic to cow's milk. Because like after I got done breastfeeding and stuff, they found out. And I would say you with the you with the protein kind of deficiency and stuff like you can't take in a certain amount of protein in one day like that. I don't know when they found out out like if that was like right after you were born or not. So like that's it definitely takes a toll on the diet and stuff. You know it sucks. I can only have six wings. Yeah. That's yeah. Some people. I eat nothing. People eat like twenty four. I wish I, I, I wish I could eat like a champ. I can't. Yeah. Let's see. Um, the doctors tell me do that I do need to lose weight, but like Austin said, it, it is completely hard for me. Yeah. Like you see me eat so much fruits and vegetables, and not gets wasted. You live on a pretty like fibrous diet, like with a lot of like fruits and vegetables and stuff and like I, in the end i don't think that it's your i don't think that it's your your way of living and like the habit and stuff but like the weight that you put on i i just think that it's not necessarily genetic but like it just kind of happens and you don't do like like you don't do anything necessarily to put the weight on i like you, you exercise and stuff, and you you get out there and you'll throw the baseball with me, you'll throw the football and stuff, and you'll walk with me, walk the dogs and stuff. But like, I just don't know where it comes from. You know what I wonder? Since I eat that much, oh, I was farther away from like since I was like eat. I eat, it's not like we have chips all the time or sweets. Yeah, so I don't get that completely yeah that's a question that will be unanswered until at some point maybe in life they'll make a food pill yeah speaking of 
speaking of, uh, you said earlier that I get outside a lot and throw baseball. Yeah. Um, that- you forgot to mention the football thing. Remember me and dad were thrown and I threw it far. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you got a cannon of an arm. I don't know. I, I think I think it's just the it's weight. Just, yeah, I was to say like for for all the times that we've thrown a football and you've thrown it like over my head, it's it's impressive. How scary does it go whenever it goes over your head directly? Uh, very scary because I think it's gonna end up in the neighbor's yard. She's gonna come out. She's gonna come out and be like, "I don't fuck you in my yard." Probably. <laughs> Dad, why the fuck are you in my yard? Right. <laughs> I'm just playing. We'll but, uh, cut that out at some point. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, you throw the football over my head, and I think to myself, in that very split second, I'm like, I wish I could throw. I wish I could throw the way Mark does. <laughs> you know, I think you're better with throwing the football, but I think I can launch. I can launch a baseball. You can, but remember, um. Whenever, I think it was this summer or last summer. Remember whenever I kept going farther down the trail? And I kept like, yeah. How far was that? 60 yard through? Yeah, it, was, it was pretty far. I, you know, I, I honestly could not like judge it by eye, but you were definitely pretty far away. To be able to throw a baseball from that far all the way up to the house, it was, it was a long shot. Mm. Do you ever wish you lived in the jungle? Hmm. Um, kind of. Because I like to learn. I like to see what other animals are like. Study their movements, how Coyote Peterson does and stuff like that. Coyote Peterson, Brain Wilderness. Oh my god. He he's a he's a legend in my books. Me too. Man, I watched I watched videos of him for a long, long time. How many animals or wild animals have he really dealt with? Has he? Not nearly as many as he has. The most I've dealt with is probably like a millipede or like a, a ants in the backyard. Mm, dragonflies to some other places. Dragonflies on the I farm. Remember, uh, well, yeah. Um, that's what I remember seeing. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Uh, like, well, I mean, he travels. Like, he travels all these different places to see these things. But I think there's a lot of, like, uh, there's a lot of, I can't necessarily say a lot, but, like, there's some, like, Pennsylvania-specific things that we see here. I think. I don't know. I don't know enough about, like, the anthropology of like our land or not forestry uh, people. Yeah. I was, um, I, I was an FFA slash 4-H as well. Um, I didn't do too bad on the forestry. I mean, I helped our team come in second at least. I got lots of awards and journal entries. If you remember reading all the, yeah, I was dedicated to that. Copy, paste, copy, paste. That's all it was. <laughs> I had, uh, let's see, at least over uh, 1,053. That's how many I had in the end. So, like, forest, as far as forestry goes, I mean, like, here, I mean, we don't have necessarily, well, we have, we have, like, forest around us. But, like, where we live necessarily, we live kind of in the middle of town, so it's not necessarily, like, it's not like too wooded around where we're at, but it doesn't take too long to get to the wooded areas and stuff. Have you ever cut? Well, I mean, you've helped us cut trees down and stuff for people that need like trees down in the yard and shit. Like, yeah. you know, you know, have you ever cut down a tree and like you're moving logs and stuff, and all of a sudden you look down and there's a big ass spider on a log? There's some big, mm. big spiders that show up in the logs, especially the hollowed out ones, like the maple trees and shit they use for, for, for tapping for maple, for like maple syrup and stuff. I got, I got one final sub or topic. We haven't said anything about this. We both are firemen. 
It's true. Um, yeah, we both are firemen. Um, I've only been in there for two years, really. I forgot to mention that, but I helped out a lot. I don't answer many calls. It's just I don't get them a lot. Yeah. Go ahead and share your opinion about it. Um, I definitely go on. I, I, I go on as many calls as I can, at least as many as I can feel helpful on. Sometimes, like, especially for the medical-oriented calls, I don't think that I'm the most useful on because I feel like I'm kind of just in the way and stuff. But That's on every medical, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not medically trained at whatsoever at all. I, I, I like... I like the... Like, just the raw kind of fighting fire aspect of it. That's, like, that's always been the kind of, the glimmer of attraction. Like, that little, like, whenever you see it as a kid. Because, I mean, do you remember back in 2009, the fire that happened just down the street with that garage? Um, I don't know. You were what? You're, I was six years old, maybe. I remember the one down the trail. That's the last big one I remember. That was the biggest fire, like structure fire that I think I've ever seen in my entire life. And there was paint cans in the building. And the more that the building kept burning, these paint cans would get hotter. And then we were we were standing out on our back porch. And this was literally like a block away from our house. The flames were like... Tall. They were tall flames. And eventually you start hearing boom, boom, boom. And these paint cans inside the building started to explode. And that was that was I think what kind of sparked my attraction for like it sounded like Tannerite is what I'm guessing. A little bit. Um <laughs> like the dad being a firefighter and stuff too. Like it like a little bit after that. Yeah. Well, Dad was a firefighter back in, I was young. So I think, I think he left the fire department in 2003 and then he got back into it around like 2011, 2012. Yeah. 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 And then he, um, he got back into it like around 2011, 2012. So I was around 11 or 12 years old at the time whenever he got back into it. And I remember, like, on my Saturdays, I would spend them down at the fire department with my with my father, with our father. I got a video idea. It's not really the most, the best thing. Would you agree to, to do, uh, uh, if we went to a nice spicy market, try some peppers and review them? Because you know me for... <laughs> he, spicy food we should talk about that just for a little bit even um say how much or i'll tell him how much i love hot stuff yeah i'm a daredevil i want to continue on the fire department stuff before i before oh we yeah that. I'm sorry like so i say dad's been always kind of a role model to to me and i'm i'm pretty sure you as well like no doubt about that. Dad, like, yeah. our dad kind of created, like, the 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 big strong man provider, the household role model that we have had growing up and stuff. Like, going outside, splitting, splitting logs for fires and stuff. Like, that's been, that's, he, he's been our role model to be, like, you know, just a man. So there's nothing like there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being like just a man. Shall we go on the final subject? Yeah. Uh since Austin see me eat so many hot stuff, I could bear the pain. He's <laughs> how much hot stuff have you seen me eat? I've definitely seen you eat some very hot like peppers and hot sauces and stuff. I got the LD50. I got the LD50 from a local store. 
Um, remember I even tried that Reaper. I don't. It didn't even bother my stomach for no reason. I don't know what was up. Yeah. Ooh, tell me. The final thing that goes with it is our garden. I used to grow it. I think it was like three or two years. The banana peppers. Oh, uh, they they were called the Inferno. <laughs> Inferno banana peppers. Remember how I acted on that day? Had I ate one? Yeah. I was jumping up and down. Like I was. <laughs> I like I like to think that I can that I have a high like spice tolerance and stuff. That's what we should do to end this podcast episode. We should eat like spicy hot peppers. Uh, I'll do it. I'll do it right now. I'll do it right now. Okay. We have those peppers. <laughs> we have the habaneros. Okay. Habanero is as hot as we can go because that's all we have. Do <laughs> you hear this? I'm calling you out. Uh, it's habanero time, and I'm ready. Mother, hold them up. So, we're talking about uh, we're talking about spice spice tolerance challenge. I guess we're gonna find out who the true who the true spice king is between us. Sure, That's how yeah. nobody drink any water. We're gonna do no water challenge. All right, so you can water. All right, listen. So, terms and conditions is. We kind of said, like, which one of us has the higher spice tolerance. And I guarantee you I'm going to take one article of clothing off during this. So, are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. Oh yeah! Oh my god, that's hot. That is good. Oh, that is a hot pepper. Man, you okay? Yeah. Yeah. This was like yeah, that's right. The hot pepper. I need some water. So the challenge ended. Yeah, yeah, you won. So I'm gonna keep going longer. Oh my god, that wasn't that bad. Water doesn't make it any better. Look at this. Feeling. I think he had someone got more than me. <sighs> you good? We have all my mouth. <laughs> The challenge ended. Breathe. Like, you can take a drink of water if you want. Well, it makes it worse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh my god. You need a question? No, yeah, actually. There you go. Yeah, it's weird. What? My nose isn't even running. Do you feel it? It might still have it. Or something is like primitive. Like, I don't mean to get all Joe Rogan, but like, it feels like something is attacking you. <sighs> I get like cold chills when I'm hot. And it's like, it is grabbable. Like, the kind of.
You know what? But we should do this weekly. With a hotter pepper each time. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's best idea. We don't want to get to the re- Oh my gosh. Who knows is running? Hmm. So this is going to hell as a podcast. <laughs> I, know, I was literally crying. I don't know if you guys can see it, but like the red in my eyes, I was crying. Yeah. <laughs> what a hell of a face reveal. Mm-hmm. I would say that this has been a pretty eventful podcast so far. Um, we've done a lot. We've talked pretty personal. Um, we've, uh, yeah, touched, a, touched over a bunch of pretty, I would say, specific topics. Um, Sorry, we, plan, <laughs> we plan to do more gaming. Whoever watches, I hope you enjoy the gaming videos. Um, we try our hardest on them. Again, we are, well, me who edits them. I am a full-time worker, Mark, who glad they did his face reveal by this point. Um, yeah. Mark, I know Mark and Overload, they, they come into the videos and stuff and they, they help out with the gaming reviews, or not, not reviews, but like the gameplay videos. Um, big shout out to them. They definitely help out a lot. Um, yeah, that's, um, that's pretty much it. So, um, uh, yeah, if you guys, if you guys like this, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you feel under the kind of your heart, and, uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.